All right, welcome to day 37 of Mastering Astral Projection. Uh, so, the exercise for today is uh, very similar to yesterday. The difference being uh, that today... Um, we're doing uh, body loosening bouncing for 15 minutes. Um, the way this works is, so you'll do everything, let me just go through everything so we get it down. First you're going to do your walkthrough, okay? So again, pick your two objects in your room, uh, Ray had left a message for me and I returned back uh, a reply talking about rehearsing, as if you are an actor or actress and getting ready to go on stage, uh, you want to have everything down, your lines, Maybe not your lines, but you have, let's just say that you're going to have a little bit of improvisation, but you know basically the theme of what you're going to be doing. So you imagine that you're having your projection, and the body double gets up, and then it goes to the first object, and you're narrating everything as it happens. As the projectable double comes out, you're excited, I'm oh, sorry, hold off on the excitement, because we have to wait for excitement, but you acknowledge, I've come out of my body, I'm having an out-of-body experience. I'm going over to the first object, I'm now touching the first object. I'm going to the second object, I'm now touching the second object. And now I'm turning and I'm looking at my body, and I'm going to my body, and I'm going to go back into my body, but first I'm going to get my excitement going, because I'm so excited that I'm going to remember everything that has happened. And now I'm going back into my body, and you aim to the chest, and you bring yourself back into your body. Um, so that's your walkthrough. Uh, brainwave generator, optional. Uh, relaxation, entire body, five minutes. Breath work, pacing the breath at the count that we discussed yesterday, five minutes. Uh, energy body pre-stimulation, uh, feet, legs, hands, arms, five minutes. Optional, full body circuit, five minutes. Optional, primary center stimulation 15 minutes then we move into the trance with the third eye trigger uh, so you do your stretches and then you do your favorite trance exercise while you are looking up into the third eye center you do that for 15 minutes and then you do body loosening bounce loosening 15 minutes um, he says uh, to feel the room around you, build a picture of it in your mind's eye, then start the full body bounce from floor to ceiling. Uh, find the bounce speed that works for you, uh, and then you're going to extend your point of awareness out in front of you to an area where you'll, where you were or would be looking, and then you do your body bounce from floor to ceiling from that point. So, let's say I'm sitting here in front of my computer, my computer is about two feet in front of me, and then I will be projecting two feet in front of me and doing the full body bounce, except it'll be at that point where the computer monitor is from floor to ceiling. Um, and you basically repeat this, and you bounce your awareness. Um, he says this is crucial for stimulating dormant OBE ability. Um, and the idea is to be letting go. And, um, yeah, Brian says it's like swimming. Um, and you should wait about an hour after eating to do this work. Um, so that's the basis of it. Um, more about projectable double loosening. Uh, this is one of the uh, critical techniques. Um, what he says that when you make the projectable double, it either is constructed uh, just prior to the out-of-body experience or it happens right when the out-of-body experience happens. So, um, but the idea is to kind of generate it ahead of time. Uh, to stimulate the process of it happening. Um, and then uh, responding to spontaneous OBEs. 
uh, he wanted to talk about what happens, um, there are vibrations, uh, f from mild to patchy or intense, um, strong heart center activity, which we talked about yesterday, um, and, uh, and you have, you have to have faith that your heart is okay. Um, you'll have astral sight, which is like looking around your room, uh, but your eyelids are closed, and, um, there are lots of noises that could happen, chainsaws, knocking, footsteps, laughter, voices, etc., etc. Um, somebody knocking on your door, calling to you, um, and he says, don't be fooled. Uh, and then, yeah, just remain calm, because it's okay. Um, so, uh, my dream, I had the most incredible dream last night. Actually, I should say that just uh, when I was doing my uh, the um, projected body double loosening um, I, had, I had I think one of those moments of experiencing my room through my eyelids it went by really fast, it was so quick it was just this flash but I, it was my room so I thought it was kind of interesting. My dream last night was incredibly interesting though I was uh, in uh, it seemed like it was Southeast Asia somewhere. Um, uh, the people were very dark-skinned uh, and looked maybe Javanese or Indonesian, and uh, it seemed like it was incredibly, incredibly long time ago. Um, it was in this old temple. There were a lot of people, and there was this man, and he was like a blacksmith, and he was he was doing this process. Of testing um, whether people could have children, I guess. And we brought him this seed, and this woman that was with him took the seed and placed it out in front of the blacksmith on this very hot stone that had some fire burning beneath it. And he took this long stick and he started working the seed until it expanded into this piece of silver that was like a small dish and it had this ornate pattern on it and when he made it the dish had this design on it but it was very intact and this was an indication that we were chosen and um, we were very excited and it was interesting because there were a lot of people around and um, Nobody made a really big deal about it, but it was like everybody had this uh, reserved acknowledgement of this sacred moment that uh, we had created th something, and we we're, 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 we're that was going to enable us to create something even more amazing, which is a human being, and um, and, and but there was this very it was like we knew we were safe because everybody acknowledged us at the same time but at the same time w people were uh, unhappy with us because we were we were kind of pulled out as being special for getting the opportunity for doing this in fact um this other little man he was like a midget or something with this other woman came up to the blacksmith and was arguing with him right after us like he wanted also to have a sacred seed or something and he actually pulled out a gun and he shot the blacksmith in the mouth and and we were kind of shocked by that but it was like thing it was everything had already happened it was already done um and then somebody presented it us with this um this drink made of ginger root and we were drinking it it was kind of like an acknowledgement something sacred purifies i'm not even sure um Anyway, that's what I remember of the dream, but it was just how vivid it was, how vivid all the people were. There were lots and lots of people in this temple, and they were all just kind of sitting around. It was, it was, it was like it was like it was overpopulated, and people were hungry, and oh, it was, it was, it was beautiful and strange at the same time. And one of the interesting things was um, I also got a song with it, this incredibly beautiful hunting melody. Uh, this woman singing with this uh, kind of uh, like a harpsichordish type of piano in the background. So I was able to grab it 
I was I keep a tape recorder um, by my bed just for those moments, so I was able to capture it. So it was pretty interesting. Anyway, that's my dream, and I will let you go. Good night.